It's tricky to uh, use technology as a teaching tool well because there's a tendency to think that it's going to be a, a, a magic bullet in some sense. I think the tools are getting easier to use and it, it's an exciting time to try and adapt uh, the Web 2.0 approach to learning. The Living Oceans Foundation is very concerned with coral conservation. And they wanted to try and experiment because they believe so strongly in educating the public about the cutting edge coral reef research that they fund that outreach is considered an uh, extremely important part of the equation. And that's the philosophy here at the Virginia Institute of Marine Science as well. We, we look at outreach as uh, something that has to be done in concert with the research, otherwise the public's not getting top dollar for um, these publicly supported research projects. We were funded to try an experiment that had never been done before, and that was teaching from the bottom of the ocean at the college level. But this is the first time Aquarius, which is the world's only underwater lab that's run by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, this is the first time Aquarius had been used for teaching at the college level. Uh, we put together uh, six hour-long classes that were taught from Aquarius. And it was quite a logistic undertaking because we had to uh, uh, figure out how to disseminate these uh, talks from the bottom of the sea out over the internet. We wanted to make them participatory at some level. Uh, so we had to have lesson plans and problem sets. And then we actually did one-on-one -on -one outreach with uh, more than a dozen institutions across the planet through the power of internet video conferencing. And over a week-long period, uh, the, the VIMS graduate students got to go down to Florida and be my topside support while I lived underwater for uh, five days inside Aquarius delivering these lectures. Uh, back in 2005, the uh, Dean of Graduate Studies, Iris Anderson, funded me to develop a new class here at VIMS. And it's, it was one of the first in the country, actually, on ocean observing system technology. O ocean observing systems are oceanography's uh, latest hammer. Uh, what it is in a, a nutshell is if you imagine the United States, including uh, uh, Hawaii and Alaska, the, the coastal zone of the entire U.S. is getting wired for light and sound. And these consist of fixed observatories usually buoys or sometimes they're instrument packages on the seafloor. They're all networked together over the internet, sharing data and um, bringing the data back in real time to the public. And then we, are, we have satellites that are part of this equation and ships. And then we have free swimming technology like uh, Fetch that fills in the gaps between um, the points. So this free-swimming robot, uh, a free-swimming computer, um, carries sophisticated sensors, and, and those sensors can change depending on the research question that we're addressing. And it goes out and it swims around in the world ocean the same way that a, a fish or a sea turtle or a dolphin might. It has to make decisions on its own. Uh, we're not uh, controlling it with a joystick back in the lab. Uh, they're actually sending these robots under the ice sheets that stick into uh, the ocean and making the first ever observations of how fast these ice sheets are melting. Uh, here in Hampton Roads, this technology will be very important in protecting national security. Our ports and harbors are vital to the commerce of the nation and there's an effort here in, in Hampton Roads that I've uh, been involved in to try and make uh, this place a center of excellence for using robots to protect our uh, ports and harbors against terrorist attacks. So it's, it's been a, an interesting uh, almost 15 years now since uh, I, I first started uh, trying to make one on the kitchen table and um, part of why I got the OFA was for uh, creating a new field.